What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Off the Couch Boxing. I'm your host, Reckless Rex Ruger, along with the Alexis Arguello puppet. And I'm your other host, Frank Benji's back with another one. That's right. Back with another one. And our guest is here now, which we always love and appreciate. Sean, what's going on, man? Yo, how you doing? Good to have you on here, man. We just watched your fight a couple weeks ago, man, and uh, was pulling for you, man. Was really pulling for you. I appreciate that. Just know you had a couple of fans right here, man. But uh, uh, so, uh, um, when you lose, uh, when you lose a fight like that, you, you know, to a guy that's, you know, I, I, obviously they're trying to slap the label on him of being like the future, the face of that division, you know. Uh, uh, you know, uh, his road goes on, man, but where do you go back to, man? Like, what's the next, like, jumping off point for you? Um, just continue what I'm doing, uh, continue to win fights and work my way back into uh, another big fight and come out on top this time. Um, I mean, honestly, like you said, uh, I went into the fight, uh, as a, I believe like 20 to one underdog, um, yeah. relatively unknown and still, I mean, in my opinion and many other people I've seen across the internet and in real life, I feel like I did win the fight. Um, yeah. It was a very close fight, but I definitely feel like I did enough to pull it out. Um, gave him a lot of trouble, made him do things he had never had to do before. Um, yeah. Made him uh, extremely uncomfortable. So I do feel like I won, but, you know, like it's, you know, it's not the end of the world. So obviously, you know, I'll just continue to get back into the win column. Um and again, continue to do what I've been doing, taking on tough fights and uh, looking to fight the best available until I get to the pinnacle of the weight class. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll, you know, the, like I said, life goes on. My career goes on. Uh, One thing yeah. I found really amazing, though, man, is that, uh, and I don't know where this comes from, I, but, you, you, you know, but you, one thing I like about your fighting style is that uh, there's no wasted movement. Everything is very economical, and you seem very relaxed in there, man. You know what I mean? There's not a lot of over-exaggerated movement. You kind of keep everything harnessed right in, man. Does that just come naturally? Because, obviously, when human beings are in a fight sometimes, you, you know I mean, you know, our behavior can get a little bit, uh, you know, erratic, but you were you fight very relaxed. Yeah, it's just uh, my natural style, um, as well as like I, I feel like I have an old school style. I've seen it described in an article as an old school. You do, style. yeah. Um, and that's like really what I set out to kind of model myself after was like the old school fighters. I yeah, I enjoyed the way that they fought. You know, they fought at fifteen plus round paces, so they they yeah. uh, you know, they went into the fights with a different level of relaxation, and I think uh, that like fares well for me because a lot of fighters don't in this era it's a lot of movements a lot of you know it's a lot of different things that are like i said wasteful like me i've always prided myself on being able to go into fights like mentally and physically relaxed and i, I think it allows me to think better and it allows me to see things yeah. that i wouldn't see you know until they actually settle down i feel like if you go into the fight settle down from the very beginning it allows you to see things and then make adjustments and take advantage of things later on in fights did you feel like that was an important strategy because he is, uh, you know, such a young guy? I mean, I know he's had technically he's had more pro fights than you, but he is one of these young guys, that, you know, where they put a lot of hype around him and really touted him as like the future of the 168 division or whatever. So, you, 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 you know, do you feel like maybe, you know, that relaxed style is the is the kind of fight that you needed to fight? Because I, I can't believe that he's not going to be, uh, you know, uh, extremely riled up. I mean, it's a lot of pressure to put on a young guy. Yeah, I mean, um, I wouldn't say that I like changed my style up in order, you know, in order to get through this fight. I just, you know, I, I made a, I, we had a game plan going into the fight, obviously for him, but I didn't change up my entire style or try to reinvent myself in order to, to beat him. I didn't feel like I needed to reinvent myself to beat him. I felt like the things that I was good at would be good enough to beat somebody like him. I don't think he had ever seen anybody like me or had been in the ring with anybody like me up until that point. So um yeah what what i do i felt like was was good enough that night um like i said a lot of guys that he fights they either they uh spend a lot of energy trying to get close to him because they feel like you know because he's so tall like me i mean all of the things that i brought into the ring were like natural abilities i have naturally longer arms so i could you yeah. know i could box from the outside with him um i could avoid his shots you know get up under his shots because i'm shorter than he is but i could also box at range with him because because of you know the length advantage i had in the in the reach 
So, um, yeah, like I didn't really, like I said, I didn't really do a whole lot to change myself. I just felt, you know, I had a great training camp. I sparred guys similar to his style and similar to his, uh, um, similar to his build in order to just to get used to the look. But what I do was, was good enough. You know, I really yeah. don't know. Do you, find, do you find that in boxing nowadays, sometimes when they are like quote unquote fast track in a guy, that no matter what you might bring to the table, aside from knocking him out, you're not going to leave a winner. Uh, absolutely, you know. Like I said, I went into the fight. I I, I had uh, received messages from different people, different trainers. Um, just oh, sorry about that. Just different people in general, letting me know, like, hey, um, don't let the fight be close because you know exactly what's going to, you know, if if you go to a decision, you know what's going to happen essentially. Yeah. Hey. And unfortunately, we do see that a lot sometimes. You know what I mean? Like we see guys that are like, uh, you know, already hailed and already already stamped, uh, you know, uh, as the future of the sport. And they seem like they're the guys that's the narrative they want to push, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And again, it was going into the fight. I mean, like I said, I understand, you know, I'm relatively unknown. Um, I would have assumed it would be like another showcase type of fight for him. Not understanding. Right. Only, only simply because they don't know who I am, which I can respect, you know. Um, I understand that public perception works and the way that people think when they're uh, when they're seeing someone for the first time against someone who's already being stamped as the future, you know, going into the right. night, you're not assuming that it's going to be a whole lot. That's why a lot of people were surprised. I mean, like I said, I know what I can do. I've been, like I said, flying under the radar for a long time, but there's a, plenty of fighters out there and plenty of trainers out there who have seen what I can do and who do know who I am. And they will tell you, like, you know, this is a, this isn't a, you know, a walkover for Pacheco. Right. And I knew it wasn't going to be. Like I said, I, I walked into the fight very confident. When it was offered to me, I accepted it with no, you know, with no second thoughts or any kind of doubts of any kind. I, you know, I felt like it was my opportunity to finally show people. Yeah, and again, like I said, I didn't get the decision, but I did show people, like, hey, this guy might be unknown, but he is somebody that you also need to watch out for. You know, yeah, Pacheco yeah. is a good fighter, but this guy is also just as good, if not better, than he is. So pay attention to him too. Now take me back to the beginning, man. Like you know, like uh, uh, how does a guy like you even end up in the sport? Because we always hear usually one or two stories, and it's kind of a running joke. Usually, it's uh, somebody's father got him into it, or they were getting into a lot of scraps as a kid, or sometimes it's both. Well, I got myself into it. Actually, I came to it as nearly a grown man i was 19 years old fresh out of uh dropping out of my freshman year of college wow. and just decided that it was something that i wanted to do i uh yeah so another thing a lot of people don't know about me is how late i actually started um i actually i mean i started uh before i did anything i was a taekwondo state champion and regional and national champion as a kid in taekwondo so i won a lot of tournaments and around the country and then around the state. So I have a background in combat sports. It's not so much boxing, of course, but um, I was very advanced as a, as a kid and uh, in martial arts. So like competing in combat sports and all that doesn't really come new to me. So that may, may be able to explain why I'm so relaxed when I am fighting. But yeah, so I have a martial arts background. I kind of left that behind, started playing football, played that all the way to my freshman year of uh, college. Decided I wasn't going back to school, and then yeah, I just transferred that dedication and hard work over to a new, new discipline. Really, did you ever give any thought to uh, you know? Did you ever give any thought uh, at all to the mixed martial arts game because of the martial arts background? Yeah, I did, but I just uh, when I sat down and thought about it, like the earning potential, um, the damage inflicted on your body, and the longevity. Boxing was really a no brainer. You had me right. You do it. And earning potential, you had me already, man, because, yeah. yeah, those guys don't make nearly as much as what the boxers make, man. I think that's why most of them come over to uh, come over to boxing. You know, the money's just not there. So, yeah. so, uh, 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 so, so, were you somebody that watched boxing when you were little? And did you have like, uh, did you have any kind of like an idol or that guy that you looked at in the sport is kind of like, uh, uh, you know, kind of put up on a pedestal? Um, well, yeah, I used to watch. I mean, I did fight parties. Uh, obviously, you know, Mike Tyson and different guys like that were like huge, especially within my community. Boxing is very yeah. big. And, and and at the time that I was a kid, we were like going through the golden era. I was born in 1993. So we were yeah. like coming nearly towards the end of the golden era in boxing. So I had always grown up knowing about boxing. Um, not so much a huge fan as a kid, but I mean, I remember like buying pay-per-views, you know, going to fight parties, different things like that. 
And uh, yeah, when I was a kid, uh, the first boxers that really stuck out of my brain were like the Tarvers and the Bernard Hopkins, Winky Wright. I, I came up during the, like watching during that time, you know, early yeah. thousands. That was a good time. Yeah, like the early the early thousands when we got like the best fighting the best, and you know, you had, like I said, the B Hops and the Tarvers, Kelly Pavlik, different guys like that. So yeah, that was like another another small golden era of boxing that I came up watching. So again, like boxing is something I've always known about been around heard about but i never actually competed in it myself so uh to kind of flip gears a little bit what do you we got mike tyson versus jake paul coming up what do you make of the gimmick fights like the mma guys fighting uh in the boxing and uh and just like jake paul and stuff too i don't really care for it like people say that you know oh, it's bringing new eyes to the sport but yeah like these are new eyes that are being brought to the sport but they're not understanding what boxing is about and the fact that again like the history of it and the art of it and like the seriousness and the dedication that goes into it like they're just watching from a consumer's perspective they're not watching from a boxing fan's perspective like me i i'm a fighter so when i watch fights i'm watching from a fan's perspective but i'm also watching as a fighter and i understand hey these guys went through hell during training camp these guys you know went through long grueling sparring sessions and strength and condition i i understand everything that went into what got them to the ring versus you know someone who's just a casual fan they're just looking at the night of the fight and looking at what happens there and judging fighters based solely off of what they see that night so like i you know if you can make money doing it then cool but like me i don't really i don't really respect it personally but I, i'm never going to tell somebody not to make you know not to make money. right right and and so obviously you know you're somebody with a particular interest in the 168 pound division uh, uh, if you could put your own promoter hat on, uh, uh, you, you know I mean, what would be the fight in that division that you would like? Obviously, obviously Canelo's the big money maker. Everybody seems to be chasing Canelo, but he, he can kind of punch his own ticket at this point. So, I mean, uh, you, you know, uh, is there anybody, and is there anybody that you would want in particular as the, uh, you know, as a follow-up fight to, you, you know, to this one that you just had, you know what I mean? Like, is, is there an opponent in mind, uh, you, you know, you feel is, you know, it's kind of like your, you know, get back on track fight. Right. Um, well, I don't have any. I'm. Uh oh, we lost him. I think he touched his AirPod and it. He might have. Yeah, he might have. It all happens live here, folks. No, he'll pop back in. There he goes. Sorry about that. Drop that first. AirPod. Yeah, AirPod. AirPod malfunction, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you were saying though, like uh, you know, in the 168 pound division, you know, what I mean, like like who you have your eye on as a possible opponent. Um, I, I really would like to go after like former champions, top level contenders, guys like that. Again, people who are going to put me in a place where I can contend for a title again, like the Pacheco fight. Like I said, I took the fight knowing everything that came with it as far as like the being the underdog and the possibility of not getting the nod on the cards. But those are the kind of opportunities you really can't turn down if you want to be a major player in the division. So I just, right. I want to continue to fight those kinds of fights. Um, yeah. I, I watched Sergey Dan. I watched uh, Kuzi over the weekend. Those are the fights that I would love to have. I think those are the fights that will put me right back in the thunder. Um, yeah. But honestly, I'm willing to fight whoever's out there. I think I've shown that, through my career, even before I signed with management or a promoter, I had taken a Von Alexander fight. I mean, you saw him on the card. Um, I fought him before, I think, yep. 7-0 when I fought him. Um, yeah, so I, I I mean, I be, I fought more who was 10-0. We were both 10-0 at the time. So I've been willing, you know, above the rest of the, you know, the guys in my weight class. So whoever's really, you know, I'm more than but hold on, your voice is getting your voice getting a little broken up. It was just your voice was going in and out a little bit, that's all. Uh, yeah, I was just saying where it makes sense and you know, if it's gonna push me in a in a direction where it's gonna lead me and I'm willing to take it. Uh yeah, I've never never said no to an opponent, never turned anybody down. So, you know, it just always has to make sense. As long as it makes sense and I'm willing to do it. 
Now, we always see boxers talking about their legacy. Uh, uh, and I know we just mentioned Canelo. He's obviously stamped his ticket already. You know, if he walked away from the sport right now, uh, uh, you, you know, I think he cemented his legacy. But as somebody that's in that 168-pound division, if he doesn't fight David Benavidez, which a lot of people are, 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 you know, really raking him over the coals as it being like, a you know, he's ducking him or whatever. Say what you will about the whole situation. But will he retire if he doesn't take that fight and look back on that as possibly like a misstep and, and something that could potentially hurt his legacy? Well, I mean, I mean, if you're a prisoner of the moment, then yes. I mean, the guy, this is the same guy who's fought. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's well put. <laughs> he's fought Floyd Mayweather. He's fought Triple G three times. He's fought Danny Jacobs. So, again, like you said, he's punched his own ticket. He's going through what I call, I, I call it, I have my own thing called the Mayweather. That everything that you do is harshly criticized. Every fighter who comes to a point yeah. where they're, they've established a and you know they they you know beat everybody there pretty much is to beat eventually you get to the point where no they no no fight you take is going to be enough oh one second sorry hey 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 hey. good point good point i don't know i think it's a little bit of a mistake though i would like to see canelo take that fight though yeah i think eventually you you know we're big worthy in the fans eye. it's just uh, uh a matter of you've done everything there is to do so it's like when you start to do what you want to do you know you start to make the fans unhappy but right he was scared of him three times he's fought just about everybody there is to fight so i mean he has yeah it, it gets to, hold on man. close the door close the door i can't take you over there right i'm sorry give me one second <laughs> See, we know the struggle of parenting. Now, this is something we relate to right here. <laughs> I love when these moments happen. I love when these moments happen. I really do. I love life happening live like this, man. You know? That's how it happens, man. Even if I could edit, I would never edit this kind of stuff out. I would. My, my three year old boy is friends. Nothing better, man. Hey, listen, man. We know where that comes from, man. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, w- w- uh, uh, my son over there is up to his what? He did the AirPod thing. Again. Oh, he, I didn't even notice. Shit. Yeah. Did the AirPod We're thing again. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I'll just hold my phone. We'll go without the AirPods. And uh, and and so uh, you know, obviously, you just had the fight. We're into April right now. Uh, activity rate. You know, uh, going through the rest of the year. How many times would you like to fight? Uh, I'll be back at least two more times, guaranteed. So I know. Okay. Times this year, so um, we're already in. What's today? April twenty first. April. Yeah. And yeah, so I think um, like I said, going I, my last fight of last year was December, and I knew something big was coming down the pipe uh, for the first quarter of the year. So we kind of took things slowly, and uh, the Pacheco fight was offered to me, so we took that. Took a little time, like I said, took a little time, maybe a little more time than I wanted to uh, get back into the ring. But considering the opportunity that was presented to me, you know, it, it made sense. So, um, yeah, going through the rest of the year, I should be back at least two more times, maybe around August. And, uh, yeah, we'll see who, where, when. But, uh, yeah. Do you I'll- feel like 168 is going to be home for a while or do you feel like, a, a, you know, a possible change in weight division, you know, could be in the future? Yeah, I mean, definitely. Uh, my plan is to be a three weight uh, champion in a perfect world for me. Uh, perfect legacy for me is sixty eight, seventy five, and then cruiserweight champion. Yeah. So yeah, like one sixty eight is where I'll be at least for. Um, I can't exactly give a timeline for me. I'd say maybe a year, year and a half. I yeah. Another year and a half, about four or five more fights at the weight class, and if I can't get myself into position at this weight, then we'll move up and just continue on the same path. Now, were you absolutely shocked at the events that transpired last night? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I had a feeling you'd ask about it, too. But. <laughs> well, you know, because I think a lot of people were probably very surprised. I mean, and, and you know, I guess it seems like, ha-ha, the joke's on us because, I mean, he really seemed like he reeled a lot of people in with his antics, and especially with his past mental issues. I think it was easy for people to say, uh-oh, Ryan's off the rails again, you know? Yeah, I mean, and honestly, I didn't take any of the antics seriously. I thought more so that, it was like a sign that he wasn't taking the fight seriously. So I thought he was only, I thought he was going to lose 
strictly based on the fact that he wasn't taking the fight seriously. Not that he was like mentally unstable or anything like that. Cause I didn't believe any of that for a second, like yeah. serious, you know, but I will say once I saw them get into the ring and I realized like, I just looked at Ryan Garcia's back and I looked at Devin Haney's back. I'm like, Oh yeah, there's a huge weight. Huge. Difference. Yeah. Guys. Yeah. Once I seen that and I saw that first left hook land, I'm like, okay, this is going to be, it's either going to be a really good fight or a really short night. And it turned out to be a really good fight, thankfully. But I, yeah, I was on the edge of my sh- edge of my seat a couple times, you know. Yeah, the- that's where we, yeah, big time. And now uh, another interesting one coming up at 168, uh, Canelo and Munguia. How do you see that one shaking out? Honestly, I think uh, Munguia is actually going to come to fight. I, I think that's going to be a really good fight. It might end up being a classic in uh in a couple years i think it's going to be a i'm expecting a good fight however long it lasts i'm expecting mungia to get stopped but uh i think he's definitely going to come to fight he's going to let his hands go and if he doesn't then yeah i'll be like again really surprised i i think he's going to fight the same way he always has if he wants to win that's his best shot in my opinion and as somebody who 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 is also uh, uh, you've also mentioned uh, going up to one seventy five, uh, we've also got the big uh, uh, beater BFB vol matchup. How do you how do you see that one shaking out? That one's got a lot of people interested, real true boxing fans. Yeah, that's that again. That I think that that's probably the best fight of the year it's on paper. We're gonna have to yeah. see it down, but that's that's the best fight of the year. That's the most anticipated fight of the year for me. I think better BF is just too too much. I mean, not even just from a power perspective. I think he's very tactical, very methodical, very smart in the ring. And uh, yeah. he just breaks you down, just grinds, just grinds away. At a dedicated you. guy. Yeah. Very dedicated, yeah. too. I mean, yeah. we've had his tra- I mean, we've had his co-trainer on here a couple of times. And like, you know, it's like, you know, trying to beat somebody with that much dedication. You, you, you I mean, like it, 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 if he's in the gym and three o'clock hits, you know, he's very strict with his Muslim religion. He will just walk out of the ring and go somewhere and actually pray no matter what he's in the middle of doing. Yeah. You, 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 you I mean, but that kind of that, that, that kind of laser focus in, in, in discipline is, is, is rare. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you, you rarely meet some or rarely see fight a fighter with the combination of the physical and the mental, as like I said, as well as the dedication. A lot of fighters have maybe one or maybe even both of them. But to have all three, you don't really meet too many people or fighters who have the physical ability, the intellectual ability inside the ring, the IQ, as well as the dedication, you know, the, the willingness to be dedicated as well. Now, if the amazing Sean McCalman needs that one song to pump him up, and he sticks the earbuds in, man, and he needs uh, and he needs that motivation, what's the go-to song? Ah, shit, that's a good question. Uh, really, it depends on how I'm feeling that day. Uh, I listen to so many different artists and so many different kinds of music that it just depends on how I'm feeling that day. It might one day it might be an R&B song that gets me going. <laughs> yeah, so, so something really relaxed even could get you get, get you fired up. It just depends on the headspace I'm in. Most days I like to come to the gym with uh, like a, you know, laser focus perspective. So I, sometimes I won't even listen to music. Some days I don't even need the the distraction, you know. Yeah. And geez. I mean, I was going to I was going to ask him that question that you asked, but instead I'll go to uh, what's your least favorite part about training? Like road work. What is it for you? What, what, what do you hate doing? Uh, I wouldn't say I hate doing any of it. I will say this, though. The one thing I hate the most about training camp is just when uh, it's a good and a bad thing. You know, you get the call months out and you're just kind of you're you're training, obviously, so you're focused. But just the amount of time that everything takes in order to transpire, you know, you go through an eight week training camp. By yeah. the weeks, you're just like, man, I'm so ready to get this shit over with. Just hurry up and wait. Yeah. 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 yeah hurry up and wait and then you get to the then you get to the venue you know you get to the place where the press conference is and then you're just standing around waiting for the press conference and then when you're ready for the weigh-ins you're standing around waiting for the weigh-ins those are the things i hate the most i love to just like get down to business like once i've done training and i've peaked physically i'm just ready to go and because you are so relaxed are you somebody that can be enticed into uh, 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 a trash talking at all, or is that not really like a, is that not really like a, uh, uh, like a facet of your game? You know, I mean, some guys feel like they need it as a psychological edge, maybe for themselves or, or, uh, you know, to get themselves motivated. Uh, is it something that you engage in much or are you pretty reserved guy when you're going through the, as you mentioned, press conferences and whatnot? Uh, I'm, I, I'm more reserved. I'm very big on energy and like preserving energy. Um, yeah. 
like the more the more you talk i think that's more energy you're wasting and the, the more riled up you get the more in that you know you're wasting energy to me it's corny just because you're about to fight so you know what's yeah the yeah on a C on that Saturday night. It's like I can say, you know, I can say, hey, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna, you know, and I can tell the fans I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. And even if I win, if I don't perform to the level of the shit that I talk, right. And you know, so it's almost like a loss, you know, if you don't it's out there forever too. Everybody remembers it and goes back right. too. <laughs> shit to have a C or D level performance, even if yeah. you know, it's like, you know, it was really the- like Bill and Bill and Devin be doing, and then you go out there and get your head molly whopped in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Gotta, yeah. And it was nice to see them humbled a little bit. I gotta say, man, because like they were talking really wild about killing Ryan and stuff. I mean, it got pretty wild. You talk about like trash talk. You know what I mean? Like it got pretty fired up between those two. And they do have a lot of history, obviously. Right. Yeah. See, uh, when it's when it's personal. See, for me, I, I will, I'll say this. I don't I don't engage unless it's like personal. You know, if it's right. it's not something that could lead to us actually coming to blows outside the ring, then, you know, if, if it's something that uh, I, I'll just say, because I've been through situations like these before, and I, I have feelings towards certain fighters where it's like, if I ever see this person, you know, I'm, I'm going to have something to say to them. Like, I, I, I don't take it there with everybody just because I don't have that feeling towards everybody. Like, it takes a lot. I'm a reserved guy in general. Like, the, re- the relaxation that you see in the ring and the poise that you see in the ring, I try to carry myself that way in my day-to-day life so for me to get there with somebody like it has to actually like be you know has to really be that way or there has to be something that you said or did that really took me there in order for me to feel like okay when i see this guy i'm gonna have some words for him or if we have words for him so yeah like if you ever see me talking shit to a fighter just know like the bad blood is real so yeah this guy got under your skin yeah yeah it is real yeah and so so uh i'm first of all I want to thank you for coming on here, man. It was really great getting the chance to talk to you. I do hope you'll keep in touch, man. We'd love to have you back on again from time to time. Definitely, yeah. I appreciate you guys having me, and, uh, yeah, hopefully it's just the first of many. Yeah, it was a real pleasure, man. And, and, you know, please keep us up to speed on everything that's going on. You know, you got a fight date or something coming up that you can promote, man. We'd love to have you back on. For sure. Thank you. Appreciate you, Sean. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. All right, you guys. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. There he goes, folks. Sean McCalman. We just saw him in action, uh, what, two weeks ago against a uh, highly touted prospect, Diego Pacheco. He was on the short end of a decision there, man, but uh, uh, I thought it was a lot closer than uh, the judges, maybe possibly even a draw. Uh, you know, uh, just a guy that fights very relaxed, uh, you know, keeps everything reined in. Like I told him, no wasted movements, man. Just, you know, very old school, uh, you know, fights very close to the vest. No wasted movement. Uh, uh, I really like what I saw out of him, man. And, of course, he was fighting a guy who, as we mentioned earlier in the interview, is being kind of fast-tracked as the as the future of the 168-pound division. But isn't it, isn't, it kind of, isn't it kind of alarming that we're at a point in boxing where guys will just be like, oh, that's boxing, that it's a bullshit fake score, that's boxing? No, it's not. Yeah. Right, that's right. It's not boxing. I yeah. know. I know it's sad, man, but I appreciate it. That is the amazing Sean McCalman. Still 15 and one, seven knockouts, man. It's only one little hiccup, man. Uh, he will be back. It, you know, you can just tell by the determination and, uh, you know, that quiet confidence that he exudes, man, that uh, uh, he's going to be a, uh, a force to reckon with. He will be back. Uh, a lot of people didn't know his name, as he said, coming into that fight, man, but they sure as hell know his name now. He gave a guy that was considered a, uh, a big time prospect uh, a hell of a tough night. And, uh, you know, so that alone, on the merits of that alone, that's going to get him some more big fights. And as you said, uh, you know, or as he said, I'm sorry, his plan is to is to do it over multiple weight divisions. So wish him the best of luck, man. New friend of the show, I'd like to think, man. And uh, hopefully we'll have him back on again. And uh, especially when he's got his next fight coming up, man, we'll get on and chop it up with him again. Make sure that you are liking and following us on Facebook and liking, subscribing, and hitting that notification bell on YouTube. Because shout out Gary Busey, because I can go 15 seconds with anything. Sorry, I, had, I burped a little bit. <laughs> and let me tell you, kids, that if you want to be a champion, you have to roll with the champs. And now let me shut this off. Goodbye.